So over the years, I've done a lot of experimenting with supercapacitors. I've replaced my car battery with them back in my old Boost Pack video, which has coming up on 3 million views now. So a lot of interest uh, from folks in these supercapacitors. I've flown my drone with them, but to me, the most interesting project is using these in real-time solar applications, such as my Solon 1 2000. I started experimenting with uh, smaller uh, supercapacitors connected uh, directly with solar panels to inverters uh, quite a while ago. But the uh, Solon 1 2000 arrangement allows me to run large power tools in a portable system, so there's been a lot of interest in that. At the heart of that system are these uh, supercapacitors. They're 2.7 volts, 400 uh, farad. They hold 0.4 watt hours of energy and these balance boards. Now I'm going to put links uh, for all the parts I used on the Solon 1 2000 over at laserhacker.com. Check this video description for links to that. I'm going to be putting these boards up for sale over at teslamaker.com. And these will be great for uh, DIY experimenters that want to experiment with systems like the Solon 1 2000. And later in this video, I'll go over the Solon 1 2000, the components and how I set them up so that those that want to get a jump start on that project can begin experimenting. I'm still working with it. I'm still prototyping. But again, the heart of the system are these little uh, capacitor protection boards and these capacitors. So let's go ahead and set this up. These are very easy to assemble. You just put the uh, supercapacitors into the board. Uh, note polarity, your positive and uh, negative. In this case, the positive is marked on the board. So these fit in here very nicely. We'll get these all in place. Okay, so we've got them all in here and now we just need to solder them down. I really like these boards. They make it so easy and fast to assemble a basic boost pack. Plus, you get the balancing for your supercapacitor. So long term, you shouldn't be having any issues with the uh, supercapacitors going out of balance. Okay, that's it. So you want to check and make sure you didn't miss any points, but that's it. Very, very easy, very fast, and you end up with a nice boost pack. You've got your nice terminals here where you can uh, connect on wires with ring connectors, so very easy to work with. To charge this up, I just connect it to my 30 volt power supply and I charge it up to about 14 volts. And then it can be a direct replacement in a lot of 12 volt uh, systems for experiments. So that's the assembly uh, of the balance board with these power store supercapacitors. I tried a lot of different inverters for the Solon 1 2000. And I finally found this one, and this one just works great. Uh, it has enough power to start up my warm drive skill saw. It can do that while running a small cement mixer, which is incredible to me. It also has some other really nice features. One of the features is this on and off switch right here. And when you turn this off, it quits powering the inverter, but the USB plugs are still live. And that's really nice. Uh, if I turn the inverter off completely in the back, this, the USBs go off as well. But having the USBs on with the inverter powered off allows you to run some lighting directly off the capacitors. And this runs down, you know, down deep into the voltage. It's not as good as a DC to DC converter would be for extracting all the last few volts out of the supercapacitors, but it's, it does a really good job. It gives me a couple hours worth of lighting running, you know, a couple of these USB LED bulbs. So I really like the live USB. It's a full 2.1 amp uh, USB port here. I could plug, you know, charge my iPhone, do all kinds of charging just directly off the supercapacitors. So that's one really nice thing about it. The other nice thing that I really like about this inverter is it gives me the wattage that it, that's being pulled by a device. So let me go ahead and plug in something like this halogen light that's back here. And you'll be able to see that the light's on and I can switch to here and see that it's pulling 200, sorry, it's pulling 400 watts, 430. So if I had the solar panel connected here, you know, the 400 watt solar panel would balance out how long we could run this. But without that panel connected in, we're not going to be able to run this for too long. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. But again, I just really like seeing the watts there. Now when I ran the cement mixer, you know, I was able to look at the watts that the cement mixer was pulling and uh, that was just really useful. So one of the features I really like about this particular inverter. 
So check uh, the video description for the link to laserhacker.com. I'll put the link to this inverter as well as all the other parts. Now that we've talked about the inverter, I'm going to go over the components and how they're connected. This is actually a really simple system. So looking at the system, we've got the inverter, and the inverter is connected directly to the terminals off the boost packs. So if you look at one of these, if you build one of these up, now you could just go with one of these, and you want to be able to run things very long, uh, you know, it'll give you a little bit of buffering before this discharge. But the more of these you add, the longer you can run. So if clouds come by and obscure the sun, or it's in the evening, you want to charge your iPad and run some uh, USB lighting, you'll get more energy. Now, of course, this system can be set up in a hybrid configuration, where say you put a lithium iron phosphate battery in line with one of these. And that's got some very interesting uh, potential to it. It really works well when you have a smaller battery, but you want to start things that have a lot of load on startup. So if you've got a device like a skill saw where a lot of the initial energy pull is just the starting up, and maybe it's like a chop saw, so it's not going to run all that long, but it's going to pull a lot of current while it's running. Putting you know some boost packs in line with a battery makes a great hybrid system. But for portability, you know, for a system that you can hike into a remote area with, this is pretty hard to beat. And uh, that's what I've got this laid out for right now. So going on, we've got the inverter here and it's connected directly to the boost packs. The next thing I want to look at is this little plug right here. This allows me to kind of jump start the system and get it going. Because if I plugged the solar panel directly into the solar charge controller and the voltage on the boost pack was say three volts, there's not enough voltage to power this solar charge controller up to allow it to start charging. You need to get this up, you know, at say, I don't know, seven volts, something of that nature, before this can take over and actually start charging the system. So what I do is before this, uh, before I plug my solar panel into here, I plug it into here. And I, in a couple minutes, this charges up to around 12 volts. And once I get this up to around 12 volts, then I plug my solar panel into the in uh, solar panel charging port on this solar charge controller. I've got this solar charge controller programmed at the lowest possible setting for its cutoff voltage, which doesn't really affect anything unless I had a load uh, connected in the load output, which I don't in this configuration. On the high voltage setting, I have it set at 16.2 volts. This is not ideal. One of the reasons I'm not you know, finished with this project yet is I want to replace this out of here completely and I may have to do a custom design for a system for supercapacitors, a controller system. And right now I'm just using this, you know, it functions, it works, it's, it's amazing that it works as well as it does, but it doesn't allow me to extract all the energy out of the capacitors, it doesn't start charging the capacitors when this is a lower voltage, so there's some issues, but to get up and get experimenting with, it works pretty well. I've also added a plug here. This will disconnect the solar charge controller. Now, the reason that's nice is I still have my um, inverter over here. So if I plug in this USB light and say I'm in camp in the evening and I want to run some lighting, by disconnecting the solar charge controller, I'm removing some load from the system. Because even with nothing connected to this, it still pulls like 25, 30 milliamps. So you might as well just disconnect that and save that energy. So that's the reason for this plug right here. So that's pretty much the connection points uh, for the Solon 12000. Again, it's very simple. Inverter directly to the terminals on your boost packs. Uh, solar charge controller come off here to your battery to the positive and negative terminals on the boost packs. And uh, solar in after you get the voltage up on this. One other thing are the connections uh, to connect these in parallel like this. So I've got copper rod here and I may get the Amazon link to this as well, but this copper rod works really well and it's just the right size to slide one of these ring connectors over the copper rod and solder it, which gives me some great connection points. And uh, for the copper rod, I just connect uh, the negative one to this side and that's pretty easy. Now on the positive one, I have to be a little more careful because on the positive, I have both a positive and negative output right here. And I don't want the rod to touch the negative and to short out there. So you can see that I've got some uh, tape here as an insulator as well as heat shrink put on the rod here. So on the positive rod, I'm connecting to the positive terminals. And then I've got the uh, heat shrink as well as some tape under it to protect me from bridging between the positive and negative right here. 
So that's pretty much it. That goes over all the connections. It's a pretty simple system actually. And I'll put all these links over at laserhacker.com. Feel free to start experimenting. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential with systems like this, especially for portable applications where maybe you need to hike into an area and run some machinery, as well as coupling this up with some batteries in a hybrid configuration. You know, this is going to extend the life of your batteries greatly because all that initial current that would normally be breaking down your batteries is going to be coming off these supercapacitors. So it's a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun experimenting over the years with supercapacitors. There's a lot more to come. And I uh, just wanted to share this update. Let's all keep experimenting. We'll talk later.